Hi, my name is Dylan Palmer. I'm 21 years old and I suffer from a disability called Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy or DMD for short. DMD is a severe type of muscular dystrophy and one of the main symptoms include muscle deterioration and weakness. Due to this, I have been unable to walk since the age of 12. But due to DMD being a muscle wasting condition, it affects every muscle in my body. But luckily for me, I still have most of my movement in my arms and hands. Due to my mental strength and determination, I drive a fully adapted car and I'm a student at Bruno University studying film and television. But the main passion I have is for football. Football is what I live for. I am a huge Manchester United fan. I love playing football. People often ask me how I control the joystick as it's very sensitive and hard to make precise movements. When passing and shooting the ball, it's important that the joystick is in the correct position, otherwise the pass or shot will be off target. But as you can imagine, the hardest skill to master is the timing when striking the ball. If you mistime the shot by half a second, that's enough for you to miss the shot completely. Okay, so today we've got some training at 2 o'clock, so yeah, let's go! Yeah. Okay, so we just arrived to training. It took about half an hour. So let's go in and kick some balls. Yeah. There are a few reasons why I love power chair football. I mean, for starters, it's a sport that's extremely unique and rare. Not many people know about it. I play for a team called Evergreen PFC and we compete in the Premiership, which is the highest league at the national level. So because of this, the National League games are very competitive and there's nothing I hate more than losing. The thing I love the most about Pachai football is hitting the ball in the sweet spot and shooting and seeing the ball fly between the posts. There's no better feeling than scoring with a powerful 364 spin. This is the hardest skill to master as it's very similar to hitting a volley in football. Yeah. 
Right. Take, have a think about it. It's, it's the same principle playing the ball with the jet. Nice relax. You don't have to belt it as large as you want. Accuracy. Play it into the space and rebuild. But once you've played it, you've got to be aware, you've got to anticipate, you've got to look what your teammate's going to do with the ball. I know it's difficult at times because it comes off the ball and all that. But if you get used to the principle, like you play the ball to Ricky, right? Is he going to knock it back to you or is he going to go wide? If he's teed up himself to go wide, then you've got to go and anticipate the far post. You might be watching this thinking, this looks easy. You might be thinking, it's easy because, you know, we're not running. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. It's harder to learn to drive a power chair than it is to learn to drive. Think about it. When you play football or any other sport, you use your brain to move your leg and kick the ball. But in power chair football it's a little different. You use your brain to move the chair and you move the chair and hit the ball. There are three main ways of hitting the ball. The first technique is driving forward and hitting the ball with the front of your chair. This is a good way to hit the ball quickly, but you don't get much power. The second technique is the 180 degree spin. This is when you reverse your chair backwards and flick the chair around hitting the ball. The third and hardest technique is the 360 degree spin. This is when you turn your chair around in a 360 degree motion and hit the ball. This is very hard to master because it is hard to time correctly and get good contact on the ball. because of my son Matthew who plays for Manchester United. I also referee and officiate games for Powerchair Football. Awesome, so um, could you just describe what Powerchair Football means to you personally? It means to me an opportunity to participate in football with my son. I've been playing for 15 years which is quite a long time. As one of our young players said to me, wow you're well old, you've been playing longer than I've been alive. No, it probably didn't make you feel too great. No, it made me feel really old. Power chair football really does mean a lot to me because it's something that actually I've been able to participate in on a level playing field as because of any other sports I tried because of they weren't really geared for power chair users with severe physical disabilities. It meant that I couldn't actually participate on a fair basis with other people. Quite a few years ago, I played at... England representative level wow. and so I've travelled to Portugal, France, Japan, America all with power chair football and obviously I wouldn't have had those opportunities without it. Good for you. That's amazing how you've been able to travel the world and play the sport you love. Yeah and, it was, and it was, I was there in the early stages when there was no international game so actually I was one of the people who went and represented England when there was no international game and everyone in the world was playing their completely different rules. <laughs> so, so, considering you've been playing for such a long time, have you tried to push the sport and get more people involved at all? Yes, I accost people anywhere and everywhere I see them. Um, I think so, it is the only sport that people in power chairs can truly play that's active and competitive. Um, so I will always, wherever I am, if I see someone in a power chair, wherever I am in the country, I will approach them and ask them and tell them that there is, it is out there and where their local club is if they are interested. Sounds like you're a very good ambassador for the sport. Then. I hope so. I'm as passionate about football as it, as it comes, I think. Um, Matt's the same. And this, this game has given him that opportunity to play, to play with his friends, to meet new friends. Um, and obviously, find a skill that he, that he enjoys and he's good at. -ish. Most important question, are you Manchester United or are you City? I'm a Manchester City fan through and through. Boo! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay and um, what do you think about the sport not being in the Paralympics? Uh, Paralympics loss, simple as that. We have our World Cup, they don't like it then leave them to it. I'm sure they'll find that more people will watch Paralympics if there's a, a branch of football involved. Football is th this country and a lot of other countries. We all live by it. It's more of a religion than anything now. It's an opportunity for people of less 
ability in the in the bodies to actually compete at a skillful game uh, and enjoy it and it's an opportunity for their families to watch and enjoy too. Do you think there should be more coverage of disabled people on national TV? Oh yes, definitely. At the minute it's still very tokenistic and even the portrayals in like the news is still like either superhero disabled person or really pity story. There's no kind of just stories about disabled people just living uh, their life and yeah, doing every everyday people, things. Right? Yeah. And it's the same with all the soaps, if there is a disabled person, it very much focuses on their disability. And do you think the Paralympics portrays disabled people in a correct way or would you change that? I think it generally does portray disabled people in quite a positive light. But I think sometimes it gives unrealistic expectations because then people think all disabled people are going to be that sporty and that super fit and athletes, super fit. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the only way, to be fair, it, it, at the moment anyway, it's the only way Matthew can play competitive games of any kind. Um, the fact that it's football is brilliant because I love the game. He but gives you and your son a great opportunity to bond together. Absolutely. And he loves being competitive. It's evolved a lot since I first seen it. My first opportunity to see it was obviously when Matt played it and none of us really knew the rules and it was like more of a car crash. Um, but then after that we did play locally and we played also in the West Midlands and then we started to see obviously the skill that's involved in the game. There's a hell of a lot of skill in the game, especially with the top players and that's very evident when the games are in play that some of the, you know, some of the players really do have high level of skill. As you can see, the parachutes we use are not normal wheelchairs. They are seriously modified to allow us to turn fast and hit the ball. The parachair I use is brand new to the sport. And you might think it looks cool, you're right, it does. But it cost me £10,000. Yeah, £10,000, you heard me right. But it's worth it for me, because it enables me to compete at the highest level possible. There are two main chairs used in today's game. The most common chair is the one I use, it's called a strike force. These chairs are imported from America and these chairs are specifically modified for the sport. They are very agile and quick because they have a low center of gravity. These chairs move around 14 miles per hour. So power chair football is a huge part of my life. I look forward to training every Sunday, but it's a shame this sport is not in the Paralympics. The reason why I made this documentary is to create awareness for the sport. Maybe one day if we stick together, the sport will be in the Paralympics. This would make me and a lot of other players very happy. So thank you for watching. Yeah.
Jelly. <laughs> 